Coming up on this edition of SUTV News, NDSU sets a record for high enrollment. West Fargo gets statewide recognition. And in sports, multiple records get broken. This is SUTV News, and it starts now. Welcome to SUTV News. I'm Bryn Nelson. And I'm Delaney Freer. After three years, NDSU Provost Bruce Rayford is stepping down from his position to become a teacher. In a statement, President Dean Brashani said, while surprised, I can't help but deeply respect Dr. Rayford's desire for a return to his research, teaching, and service. His true passion is his discipline, and he has a deeply felt desire to be a part of the growing scholarly portfolio, which has led to NDSU's top-tier ranking by the Carnegie Commission on Higher Education and National Science Foundation. Rayford will remain in the provost position until his role is filled through what will be an open national search. Enrollment at NDSU set a record high this year. The enrollment for the fall of 2013 was the highest in university history. The university's official fourth week enrollment in 14,629 undergraduates, graduates, and professional students. This fall's class of first-year students is the second largest in NDSU history, with 2,553 students, up to 4.6% from fall of 2012. NDSU continues to lead the state in the number of residents North Dakotans in enrolls. Taxes and insurance are two things that most people fear, but the legacy program of NDSU is partnering up with Choice Financial Bank to change that by offering a new program. SUTV's Bryn Nelson has a story. Money Matters is a program here at NDSU that helps students plan for their financial future. This two-night-a-week event was originally made for high school students, but has improved to include the business and finance students at NDSU. It's really going to give them like a real life application um, of things they probably have never heard before. I mean, it's really aspects of life that they're going to need to know in the future. So it's real life stuff that they can look back at at a later date and kind of take that as an idea of what they've already done. Money Matters began by Choice Financial approaching NDSU with the hopes of starting a business program. They help sponsor the program and give the student leaders advice on how to present their information. Choice Financial is a newer bank, so they're still kind of getting everything um, rolling, but really looking to get involved in the community, so NDSU is a great opportunity for them. From benefits and insurance to taxes and buying a car, the Money Matters program will help with it all. It's not your typical class. It's something where you can, I can guarantee everything they're learning you're going to need to know in the future. Currently, there are 65 students enrolled in the program, but this only includes the business, finance, and management degrees. In the future, Money Matters hopes to open its doors to all NDSU majors. It's not really a class, it's just more beneficial for the students growing up and just what they have to see in the next five to ten years. I mean, it's realistic um, information that they're going to need to know. Bryn Nelson reporting, SU TV News. The next chance to get involved in this program is September 30th and October 2nd. Students who attend the second session get a free pizza and t-shirt. With new updated technology, college students are finding new ways to learn. But for some NDSU students, it is becoming a requirement. iPads are now mandated for first and second year pharmacy students and optional for third year students. Pharmacy majors were told over the summer that it was mandatory they purchase an iPad. The department hopes that using iPads will help with instruction and price reduce printing. The new initiative is creating a variety of Some people were mad. Students. There was definitely, we have like a Facebook group and there was definitely some people that were not very happy. First I was like a little upset because I knew it was going to be really expensive. Um, but then once I got it, I was like, okay, this is actually really convenient. I like it. It's, it's really easy. You don't have to worry about printing stuff off before class. You just kind of, eh, you can even like go on to Blackboard and like download it right, like right when they like Again, the teacher comes to class, so it's super fast and super easy. The cost of an average iPad is approximately $500. Coming up after the break, we take a unique look at game day coming to Fargo after this week's seven-day forecast.
SUTV News. Welcome to SUTV News. Welcome to SUTV News. SUTV News is a production of the Bison Information Network, North Dakota State University's student-run television station. We promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14, brought to you by Stop and Go. Deke's Pizza, prices with a student in mind. Fast delivery and conveniently open until 3 a.m. Order by phone at 701-235-0708. Order online at deekspizza.com or order with Deke's easy-to-use mobile app. NDSU, make Deke's your choice for pizza this semester. That's Deke's, great pizza that won't empty your pockets. SUTV News is brought to you by Stop and Go. Stop and Go, we're always there. ESPN College Game Day Come to Fargo is a once in a lifetime experience. On Friday, students participated in the Coke Zero Games held on campus. Coke Zero held the Cornhole Challenge for 64 student teams to compete in. The two person teams competed for the chance to win College Game Day prizes. The winning team received backstage passes, VIP treatment, bus tours, and meet and greets with the hosts. Coke Zero also gave away t-shirts, gift cards, and other prizes to students who participated. Students seem to be excited for everything game I, I day. I freaked out. It's, <laughs> this is a huge, I, I watch game day every Saturday. I'm a big football fan, so I knew just how big this was. But I, I, I thought I knew I should say. Like now I'm realizing just the immensity uh, of the program that is. You know, over 100 people working on it nonstop this week in Fargo and bringing attention to our city. So I'm pretty excited. We don't yet realize how incredible of an opportunity this is uh, to have three million people an hour watching us on live TV, uh, just, you know, celebrating everything that is Bison Nation, whether it's the campus, Fargo community, uh, or uh, area college students. So it's a pretty incredible opportunity. NDSU students Tucker Bergman and Mitchell Zastro were the winners. They started their VIP experience at 8 a.m. Saturday morning. Last weekend was one of the most memorable in Fargo history. About 4,500 people packed the streets of Broadway Saturday morning for ESPN College Game Day. SUTV's Nate Manning has some of the sights and sounds from the day. College Game Day host Chris Fowler said it was one of the best settings for the show. Producer Lee Fitting said that they will try to make Fargo a yearly stop if everything falls into place. Sexual violence is, all too, is an all-too-common act. This week, students and staff came together to support victims of violence. The third annual Take Back the Night gathered in the Festival Concert Hall to raise awareness and break the silence about sexual violence. The event included speakers, a march across campus, and a candlelight vigil. Take Back the Night is a time for victims and non-victims to come together and create a healing environment. Violence affects so many different people in a lot of ways, but for here on campus, think about it this way. If you have violence that is happening in your life, you're distracted from your studies, from going on and learning more about the future career that you want, and in general, just living life to the fullest. If you or anyone you know is a victim of sexual violence, NDSU has many resources, including Sarah and the Rape and Abuse Crisis Center. 
There's a new treat taking over the residence dining center. A brand new coffee shop known as the Bison Beanery is the latest addition. Construction for the shop started in May of 2013 and finished the Friday before students return to school this August. Espressos, lattes, and cappuccinos are just a few of the things available at the Bison Beanery. There's also a new smoothie flavor every week for students to try, as well as many different flavors of Italian sodas. The hours for the coffee shop are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. weekdays and 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on the weekends. Coffee shop was added as an enhancement to the meal plan to give students the opportunity to have drinks included in their meal plan. Students without the meal plan can also enjoy the coffee shop with the walk-up window to pay for drinks to go. An average of 280 drinks are served a day. Winter will be here before we know it, and an NDSU office is doing something to help those who are ill-prepared. SUTV's Mariah Stevens has the story. There is a running joke in North Dakota that there are only two seasons, winter and road construction. While natives to the Midwest can find humor in this joke, it might not be as funny to people not from the area, particularly international students. I'm sensitive to cold rather than, rather than summer, so... NDSU sees an average of 1,000 international students each semester, with many coming from countries with warm winters. Not only are they not accustomed to the cold, but they often don't have the option of buying winter coats in their home countries. Those uh, clothes in Korea could, can protect me from winter. <laughs> this is where the Equity and Diversity Center steps in with their annual winter coat drive. The EDC, located at the Alba Bales House behind Ceres Hall, spends the fall semester collecting all kinds of winter outerwear, including gloves, hats, and boots. I worry about this winter to very cold. Last year, over 200 students received coats and other winter wear, all donations from other NDSU students. The drive doesn't only benefit students from warm climate countries, but also those from countries with milder winters. My friends told us uh, it is no use to bring some Korean winter coat because uh, it's better than cold in Fargo rather than Korea. But I enjoy seeing the saying falling the snow. Mariah Stevens reporting for SU TV News. Coats and other winter wear can be dropped off at the Elba Bales House behind Ceres Hall from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday and Fridays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you how West Fargo got state recognition. This and more after this week's campus calendar. Welcome to SUTV News. Welcome to SUTV News. Welcome to SUTV News. SUTV News is a production of the Bison Information Network, North Dakota State University's student-run television station. We promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14, brought to you by Stop and Go. Jitters is your home for quality coffee drinks. Whether you crave an espresso, iced coffee, mocha, or macchiato, Jitters has just what you need. Now featuring breakfast foods like caramel rolls, bagels, and more, be sure to get your day started right. Located on 12th Avenue North, Jitters has a friendly, relaxed atmosphere with Wi-Fi capability to get all of your studying done on time. Get your fix only at Jitters.
Deke's Pizza, prices with a student in mind. Fast delivery and conveniently open until 3 a.m. Order by phone at 701-235-0708. Order online at deekspizza.com or order with Deke's easy to use mobile app. NDSU, make Deke's your choice for pizza this semester. That's Deke's, great pizza that won't empty your pockets. The Brown Bay Lunch, the first Innovation Week presentation of the year, was held this Tuesday. It gave students the opportunity to start thinking about their proposals for the contest. The presentation and lunch was held in the Century Theater of the Memorial Union. The purpose of this event was to get students thinking outside of the box. It featured a presentation about Life is Short, Break the Rules by NDSU Payton agent, engineer, inventor, and adjunct lecturer Jonathan Tolstead. A little bit uncomfortable so that, you know, because that's where if we think about all the things that are comfortable to us, we don't come up with new, different ideas. Innovation Week will begin in March of 2014. Until then, the Technology and Incubation Park will be hosting different presentations throughout the year. The City of West Fargo is getting statewide recognition. The North Dakota League of Cities has named West Fargo 2013 City of the Year. An approximate population of 30,000, the city is the fastest growing in the state. According to information on the city's website, between 2000 and 2010, they saw a growth rate of 72%. The award is given because of both the increasing growth, strong school system, industrial park, and subdivisions. This fall, the city added a second high school named West Fargo Cheyenne High. This week for Zyvok Stampede, we asked students if they had ever heard of Provost and what his job is at NDSU. Although, Al although many had never heard of him, we had some creative answers as to what his role is on campus. I have no idea. <laughs> he is a faculty member. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I couldn't even take a guess at that one. Oh my gosh, I have no idea. <laughs> Provost? No idea. Nothing. I never no. even know. To be in charge of something? Sounds like a professional... Something to do with the sports. <laughs> no idea. No idea. Uh, my professor just said that he does basic academic stuff. I honestly cannot think of anything of what he'd be. <laughs> Joining us now is SUTV Sports Director Morgan Lubin. So what do you think uh, the Provost does on campus, guys? I had never heard of that position before. I haven't either. You know, I thought it was kind of funny that that guy thought it had something to do with sports. Me being the sports director, <laughs> I knew that it didn't have anything to do with sports, although I'm not going to lie, I don't know what he does. So, taking a look after the break, football, volleyball, soccer, and more sports coming up next. Jitters is your home for quality coffee drinks. Whether you crave an espresso, iced coffee, mocha, or macchiato, Jitters has just what you need. Now featuring breakfast foods like caramel rolls, bagels, and more, be sure to get your day started right. Located on 12th Avenue North, Jitters has a friendly, relaxed atmosphere with Wi-Fi capability to get all of your studying done on time. Get your fix only at Jitters. Your campus, your news, your sports, your way. SU TV 84. When you're on the go, we're always there. When you need your campus updates, we have them, your way. Bison Sports Updates, Campus News. And when you have a second, we're always there. Stay updated, catch highlights. But when you need your biggest news. This is an SU TV News Update, brought to you by the NDSU Bookstore. This is SUTV News, and it starts now. Your campus station, SUTV 84. Oh, Argo We're Force fans because we love coming to the games. It's very affordable and the whole family enjoys it. 
We're Forest fans because we enjoy coming to the Forest games. It gives us something to do and look forward to every week. SUTV News is a production of the Bison Information Network in conjunction with North Dakota State University's Department of Communication Broadcast Program. For more information, go to www.ndsubin.com. Welcome back. After enjoying a bye week, the Bison football team returned to action at the Fargo Dome. And ECU took on winless Delaware State in the last non-conference game. Let's go out to Gate City Bank Field now. Marcus Williams warming up. We'll get to him here more in a minute. Early in the first, John Crockett takes the handoff, finds the hole, dashes down the right sideline for 34 yards, pushed out of bounds at the five-yard line. That will set up this five-yard touchdown. Brock Jensen drops back all day to throw a little pump fake run, finds Ryan Smith. Bison took the lead, 7-0. to zero. Now let's show the defense some love. A busted play by the Hornets. Corey Murphy sacked by the herd. And on the very next play, Corey Murphy, look out. That's not good. Carlton Littlejohn comes free, unblocked. NDCU had four sacks on the day. Later in the drive, here's Marcus Williams doing what Marcus Williams does best. A pick, and he returns it to the house for his sixth return for a touchdown of all time. That's tied most in the FCS. Late in the first half now, Brock Jensen is going to get in the record books as he's going to find Ryan Smith on an out route right here. That'll pass Steve Walker for the most completions all time in NDSU history. And it also sets up this a little 22 yard pitch and catch touchdown with Cooper Wallow Jr. NDSU went up 34 to 0 at that point. That was plenty as NDSU won the game 51 to 0 over Delaware State. Craig Bull gets his 92nd career win. That's most all time. Johnson, or Jensen, excuse me. Most all-time completions, Marcus Williams also tied most all-time with six, pick six on the year. And coming up this Saturday, NDC will travel down to Brookings, South Dakota, take on the Jackrabbits in the battle for the Dakota marker. That's this Saturday at 2 p.m. After opening the season with 12 consecutive losses, the Bison volleyball team returns home on Saturday to open Summit League play. SUTV Sports reporter Rich Grossman has more on how NDSU hopes to turn things around. The Bison volleyball team hasn't quite had the start to the season they were looking for. NDSU has dropped all 12 matches they've played thus far and have a record of 2-36 and 36 in sets, but that's not bringing down this young team. We've took a set off Wisconsin and Notre Dame. Like, we know that we can play to that caliber of a team, and so that gives us a lot of confidence going into Summit League play, knowing we can, knowing we can play with those teams. Uh, it's actually really exciting. I mean, I think we've learned a lot from our preseason tournaments, which is awesome. And I mean, we played some great teams, and I think now, like, we're dialed in for practice and just ready to see what happens in the Summit. So it's exciting. The Bison know that the start of Summit League play will give them a clean slate, something the Bison are really looking forward to. It feels good finally, like, getting into what we've been, like, working for, like, going to all those tournaments, playing those top teams to really prepare us for what we've been trying to practice for for this whole season. After winning four straight conference tournaments, the Bison volleyball team missed the Summit League tournament last year and had to watch from the sideline, something returning players haven't forgotten. Yeah, it definitely adds some fuel. I mean, sitting there watching, knowing that nobody was in our gym watching because we weren't in it, it was definitely, it was definitely a little bit of a depression. And like we've told the freshmen how it felt sitting here and knowing like, we are not going to do that again. We are going to play our hardest the whole conference play to get to the tournament. But the Bison have higher goals than just making the tournament. It's like our goal is to go and win the Summit League. Even though we weren't ranked very high, like we're going to come out our hardest and compete. Reporting for SUTV Sports, I'm Rich Grossman. You can watch NDSU Open Summit League play versus South Dakota State this Saturday at 7 p.m. on NDSU All Access on GoBison.com. Well, life has been good this year for the Bison soccer team at home, winning three of the four games at Dakota Field. NSU looked for that trend to continue when they hosted Eastern Washington on Sunday. Out to Dakota Field now, Bison warming up early in the first. Olivia Norman, nice pass to Anisha, Anisha Kinrath. Good shot there, but saved by Natalie Schwery. And midway through the first, as everyone's having a good time out there at Dakota Field, Cassie Black with a nice chip shot over Sierra Bonham's head. What a goal that was. Eagles took the 1-0 lead. That would be plenty for Eastern Washington. They would go on to win the game. 3-0, NDSU is now 4-6-1 on the year. And guys, back to volleyball on NDSU All Access. I'll be there doing play-by-play. -play. Bison Information Network production. I know you guys will be there too. It should be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I'm going to be there. I love watching volleyball. 
I'll definitely be there too. The SUTV News Studio has some major innovations done over the summer. After the break, we'll show you the exciting changes. More than 400 million people use Facebook to stay connected with family, friends, and colleagues. In addition to the millions of others who use Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Flickr for networking purposes. While Facebook and other social media sites are great tools to help you connect with friends and build networks, you should also be aware of the potential dangers associated with using these tools. So, let's talk tech. First of all, always be mindful of what you and your friends are posting online. Nothing online is private, no matter what security settings a website may boast. Anything posted online stays online. So take time to consider what you and your friends are putting online before you post it. For example, do you want your potential employers or your current boss to see embarrassing pictures that your friends have posted? There is also the question of how much information should you disclose on a social media site. Posting too much personal information could lead to lost job opportunities, harassment, internet stalking, and identity theft. Don't publicize information that the public doesn't need to know. Finally, you should think about who you want to see those things you've posted online by evaluating the appropriateness of the privacy settings on your social media site. It is recommended that you customize your settings such that only your close friends can see your personal information, such as your home address, email, and phone numbers. Ideally, this information should not even be online. Additionally, social media networks frequently update their security protocols, so be sure to review and update your security settings regularly. With these precautions, you will be well on your way to enjoying a safe and secure social networking experience. Out with the old and in with the new for us here at SUTV News. After using the same set for four years, we are working with a brand new, more modern set, which cost approximately $10,000. Planning began last spring and construction was completed by late summer. The old set uses NDSU's colors, but the new set is more flexible and appealing. As you can see, it has technical improvements with three TVs, Apple devices hookups, and more LED lighting. Initial soundproofing on the walls and ceiling also improves sound quality. SUTV engineer Jeff Anders constructed the set and is excited about the benefits. Everybody who comes in here and sees it just really likes the looks of it. Uh, even people in, uh, in the broadcast industry at local stations, they've seen it and they say, wow, it looks really nice. They, Everybody seems to like it, so just visually it's, it packs more punch than the, uh, the old set. The old set just kind of was looking kind of dated and, you know, just been around for, for too long. The next phase in our studio reconstruction will soon include a smaller interview set, which can be used for campus-wide talk shows and other programs. Thank you for watching this edition of SUTV News. Be sure to pick up a copy of The Spectrum and check us out on Facebook or Twitter. We leave you now with more sights and sounds from the wonderful college game day when they were in Fargo. Have a great night, everybody.